Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Essential Guide to Audio Processing in Cubase 12. I'm going to have a look at direct offline processing today. Bit of a hefty title for a relatively straightforward subject. What it basically allows us to do is, well, the clue's in the title. It applies offline processes, in other words, non-real time, to audio. It enormously helps your CPU burden because processes like event fades, envelopes, um, insert effects. These are all things that ordinarily need to be processed in real time and particularly with insert effects they can be really pretty hefty. Now there's a couple of ways that we can get to the offline processing window. There's a button for it in the toolbar. Here it is, open direct offline processing window. What a catchy title. You can also press F7, it'll uh, do the same job. And here is our offline processing window. Now, I'm going to choose this um, selected event to work on for the time being. Just have a look at it in the window below. I also just want to show you very briefly the uh, the Explorer folder. So this is basically what the what this project looks like on my hard drive at the moment. We've got these three folders. Just bear that in mind because the moment I do something, a new folder is going to appear. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is to normalize this event, which basically means take control of the overall loudness of the event. I'm going to be able to manipulate that um, in real time. Now, normalization has a keyboard shortcut N. So I'm going to process, I'm going to press N now. And you saw the audio event just shrink. That's because a maximum peak level of minus 1.67 dB. That just happened to be the lastest, the last normalization value I used in Cubase. So Cubase remembers all of your ongoing default kind of current um, settings. So it's just happened to apply that amount of normalization to this audio event. Everything just shrunk. I'll show you what that looks like in the project view. A new folder's appeared. If we have a look in this edits folder, this here is the actual audio. This is, this is this audio file that's represented by this guitar track. Now, if you look at it in the pool, you won't see this file name. The audio pool remembers the primary reference of the, of the, um, of the event. It's still just called guitar 2 and C3. So all of this is kind of invisible to the naked eye, but it is happening behind the scenes. Cubase is constantly reprocessing all of this audio in real time. So this normalization process that I've just asked it to do has already been done. When I process, when I press play on this audio now, we're going to hear that basically secondary copy of this event being played out of the edits folder. So here's the audio. Now, if I drop the maximum peak level of this audio, it's going to create a second copy of the WAV file. I'll do that now. We'll just get the audio event editor back again. Here we go. I'm going to drag it down. There'll be a brief delay. That's Cubase processing that audio. That momentary delay then is actually basically rendering this audio down to a new file. And then when we have a look back in Explorer, Here's the new audio file. A couple of minutes later, this is now the new version of this. So Cubase is constantly remembering the last thing that happened. And the reason it's recording every version of all of these WAV files is because it's all in your history. So you can go back to any moment in time and it'll basically say, oh, this is the WAV file you want me to, rec uh, to, to, to replay now. Now you can stack any number of um, offline processes on top of each other, and they'll basically build up in this list. So for instance, let's add a fade. I'm gonna go up into the process button at the top of the window, and I'm gonna say, let's have a fade in. And so again, this just happened to be the last fading curve that I used in Cubase, so that pops in. Let's say we want the fade in. Do we want it before or after? We'll normalize first and then we'll have the fade in. But I could reorder these processes in any um, manner that I see fit. The moment I did that, again, Cubase is having to basically reprocess all of this stuff in the background and figure out how all of these processes are gonna, gonna need to be applied. So now I draw my fading curve and if I, show you the entire audio. Here's the fade in being applied. Take the fade in, basically take it away. There's the audio gets bigger again. 
and I've just created it. Oh, there we go, I've just managed to grab it again. Every single time I performed one of those operations, a new WAV file was created uh, on my hard drive. And as you can see, things stack up really quickly. So now we've got individual um, WAV files being created for the fade in and the normalize. Every time I do anything, both of those files have to be recreated. Because if I put the fade in before the normalize, suddenly the normalize has new values. Cubase needs to know what's going on. So it needs to send the audio through all of these processes in, in actual fact. You know, I'm not gonna say in real time because it doesn't take all that amount of time to process, but it does have to do all of this work. If I change my mind and decide I don't want one of these processes, right click, delete, and now the fading's just disappeared. So we've reverted back to the original non-faded version, but we still have our normalize. Pull the normalize down a little bit more. Audio event's gonna get quieter. Now, the reason all that stuff's happening in real time is because I have auto apply enabled. I pretty much always do because I'm perfectly happy to wait that little period of time while Cubase processes it. But if you're operating on very large uh, events, you don't want it to basically reprocess every time you, you know, change your values very, very slightly. You can basically disengage auto apply and then kind of fiddle around with your normalization value or whatever it is. Once you've decided that the settings that you're applying your offline pro uh, offline processing to are good and you're happy with them, turn auto apply on. It'll basically catch up and perform all of those processes uh, in order to get to the stage where you know, you're good to go again. As you can see, there's a pretty long list of uh, very standard operations that you wanna be able to perform, but we can also apply plugins. So let's add some phase. The phaser out. Once again, these are the default values that the phaser happens to be, and you can see that the audio has immediately been redrawn. So let's hear what that sounds like. Yep, there's my phaser. Now let's say this normalize and phaser combination is something that I really like and do very often with my audio. I can control click the normalize, so I've now selected both of those um, offline processes, and I can drag them down into my favorites box. You can see drop processes here. If I let go, it's now gonna say, what do you wanna call this? So I can say normalized phase with an S. <laughs> oh, <laughs> normalized phase, too long. Well, Cubase has decided it wants to call it So, uh, okay, fair enough. So now basically that is a preset that I can apply to any edit. So if I'm um, working on this event up here, I can choose, I can just literally single click this favorite and all of those processes are immediately applied. And now there's my phase. And by normalization, the, the volume of the audio just got squashed. I could choose these phaser settings by right clicking copy, select my third event, right click paste, and now just those phaser values have been carried across, uh, leaving the normalization behind. If I now select all three of those events, this gets a little bit complicated. This isn't something I would normally recommend that you use the offline processing window for because it gets really pretty confusing quite quickly. But it's saying three of the currently selected events have phase applied to them. Two of the events are normalized, but it becomes a little bit difficult to make sense out of what's going on because I might have changed the phase settings between these three events, but you only see one view. If I change any of these values in this phaser now, let's say I increase the feedback to 71%. Let's have a look at all three of those events. Now, have, when we have a look at the phaser, the events have been set to 71% for all three of them. They might have been different, but the moment I apply an edit to something that's in view of all of these events, it's gonna be applied to all of them. So just bear in mind that you are entering choppy waters if you start multi-selecting events and try to get too clever with your offline processing. I don't recommend that that's how you do it. I really like to work on an event by event basis. Keep everything nice and simple.
Speaking of simple, let's go back down to a single event again. We'll just have a look down at this bottom one. I'm now going to apply offline processing to a range uh, of the sound. So I'm just going to select one of the bars. Let's say, yep, that bar of information there. And I'm going to add some distortion. So now you can see the little range symbols appeared to say that, yes, there's offline processing being applied, but it's only to this section of the selected event. You can see inside the range, the event is quite clearly being compressed and distorted. And now, So at the moment, all of this stuff is, is basically transient. It's stored in memory. Cubase knows what's going on. It's applied all of these direct offline processes and it's rendered the audio accordingly. But they are all undoable. I could remove all of these processes and get back to the original audio. Let's say, for instance, I want to get rid of the phaser. I'll just right click, delete. And now that part of the processing has been abandoned, but you can see that the distortion is still there. If I'm happy with what's left and I think to myself, yeah, that really is the way that I want the audio to be. I can right click, make all permanent. Anything in the offline processing window is gonna disappear. And these values are gonna basically once and for all become the de facto um, information for this audio event. Let's do that. Are you sure you can't undo this? So this is where the event in the pool, which is currently untouched, the original audio event in the pool is still there. All of these offline processes have been, have been applied to the event in the pool and then a copy created in the event folder, uh, in the edits folder, all of that's going to get thrown away. And now the version in the pool is now the be all and end all. All of your offline processes have disappeared. And if we have a look in the pool, 2NC3 is now this one here. Uh, you can actually see, I won't bother playing it, you can see the, 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 the section of the audio that's being distorted. This is quite clearly what we were just looking at in the main editor. If you're applying processes like reverb or delay that have a time-based element, you can extend at the beginning or end of the events. So I could activate a tail and then give it an extra three and a half, four seconds to, to allow delay bounces or reverbs to tail off. And that's all for this one. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Please hit like if you did. It really helps with the YouTube stuff. Uh, thanks very much for watching.